And good evening. Welcome to the third and fourth angel's messages. This evening we'd like to present to you the ministry of the Holy Spirit that has never been more needed now than ever before. In our text this evening, we will turn to Luke chapter 24, and we will read verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. We have been in a crisis for quite some time in understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So, with prayer and much research, we have decided to present this to you this evening. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit, Rauk Kadesh, Hebrew number is 7307, for your references, of Elohim, word number in the Hebrew text, lexicon, 430, moved upon the face of the waters. So it was the Holy Spirit that moved upon the face of the waters in creation. This was written in the year 4002 B.C. before Christ. And the Jehovah Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, the word dust is found in the Hebrew lexicon, word number 6083, which means clay. You see, clay has minerals. We were formed of the best of the clay on this planet, on this earth. Not the dust. Dust doesn't have any minerals. So he looked to form us in clay of this earth. As I continue, in Job chapter 33, verse 4, the spirit, Raul Kadesh, of El Yehovah hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, Because if the spirit of him that raised up Yeshua from the dead dwell in you, he, referring to the spirit, that raised up Mashiach, referred to Christ, from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you, written 60 years from 31 AD when Christ ascended to heaven. This was after. The Holy Spirit, referring to his spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life, or quickeneth. It is the Holy Spirit that is quickening you and me. The Holy Spirit needeth no representation, none whatsoever, in which is the third person of the Godhead. And this is correct. The disciples returned to Jerusalem rejoicing, not that they were deprived of their master and teacher, for this was to them a cause for personal mourning, rather than joy, but Jesus had assured them that he would send the Comforter another name for the Holy Spirit, or the Paraclete. As an equivalent for his visible presence, reference is Great Controversy, 1884 edition, page 256 in equal value. He would send the comforter, which is in equal value, to our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. And let me continue. At one point, before he came to the earth, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit had what we say, omnipotence, almighty power, Isaiah 40, verse 21, 26, omnipresence, unbounded or universal presence, Psalms 139, verse 7 to 12, omniscience, all-knowing, Psalms 139, verses 1 through 6, and verses 13 to 16. At one time, they all had this. And so as I turn to my right, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscience. Keep your eyes on the second word, omnipresent, Okay. So, for those of you who are taking notes, I improvise that you take these notes so that you will understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? Yeshua surrendered omnipresence at one time prior to his arriving in the earth 
in human form, born of the Virgin Mary. Now, at one time, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit had omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience. However, it was Yeshua that gave up omnipresence. Omnipresent. He gave it up. He gave it up so that we ourselves as human beings would be able to receive the Holy Spirit all at the same time after the year of 31 AD. But let me continue here. <clears throat> Omnipotence. Infinite power. A of Yahweh, expressed by his names, almighty, creative word, Genesis 1, verse 3, control of nature, Amos chapter 4, verse 13, nations, all things, power, Romans 4, verse 17 and 24, unweariness, Isaiah 40, verse 28. This is what omnipotence means, okay? B, of Christ, or Mashiach, expressed by his power, disease, Matthew 8, verse 3, demons, Devil, death, destiny. Here are all your verses that you can write down or jot down that you may be able to read to understand what omnipotence means. Continue with number C, of the Holy Spirit, number 7307, Raul Kadesh, referring to the Holy Spirit in the Western knowledge or in the Western language, expressed by Christ's anointing, Isaiah 11, verse 2, confirmation of the gospel, Romans 15, verse 19. Now let's discuss omniscience. And of course here, we have omniscience here. And I will discuss the sanctuary that's included with this study. Omniscience is the knowledge of Yahweh, Mashiach, referring to Christ, the anointed one, but that's not his name. And your references is found here, Holy Spirit, Raul Kadesh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 13. Have we been scared of the Holy Spirit? Or have we been asking and yet we have not found any answers? Omnipresence, universal presence of Yahweh, Mashiach, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the representation of who, ladies and gentlemen, which means in the Hebrew, Raul Kadesh means the Holy Spirit in the Western knowledge, in the Western culture. So we as American citizens or from other countries, we've known the Holy Spirit, but the real name is Raul Kadesh. And so your references are found here. Now, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, Christ had shared with the disciples and many of the people that when two or three are gathered together in the name of Yeshua, he is in the presence. He is in the midst of us. And it's referring to the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? Therefore, if you refuse to believe, therefore, if you refuse to believe, until every shadow of uncertainty and every possibility of doubt is removed, you will never believe. Never. The doubt that demands perfect knowledge will never yield to faith. Faith rests upon evidence, not demonstration. The Lord requires us to obey the voice of duty when there are other voices all around us urging us to pursue an opposite course in 2016. So all this information that has gathered up in regards to there's no Trinity, there's no Holy Spirit, that it is the representation of something else, there's only the Father and Yeshua, or Yeshua's God, etc. Well, let me share with you that the Father is superior. Yeshua is inferior, and the Holy Spirit is inferior. But they are all equal. They are all personal personalities. In continuing, it requires earnest attention from us to distinguish the voice which speaks from God, for God. 1882, Testimonies for the Battle Creek Church, page 51. To my brethren in America, and this is what the messenger has shared with us through Christ, Alan G. White. The great office work of the Holy Spirit is thus distinctly specified by our Savior. And when he, referring to the Holy Spirit, is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Can I hear an amen? Because that's what we need. Christ knew that this announcement was a wonderful trust. He was nearing the close of his ministry upon this earth and was standing in view of the cross with a full realization of the load of guilt that must be placed upon him as the sin barrier. Praise him. Yet his greatest anxiety was for his disciples. He was seeking to find solace for them, and he told them, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for, 
expedient for you that I go away. A, for if I, referring to Yeshua, go not away, B, the Comforter, or the Paraclete, or the Holy Ghost, one of the same, will not come unto you. So here he's speaking of something else that's coming. He's speaking of a person that's coming in the Spirit. See, but if I depart, if I, Yeshua, depart, I will send him. Him is a person. Read your scriptures correctly. Unto you, the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. There's your references for all of you throughout the world that's saying that the Holy Spirit is not a Godhead. Now, you don't have to read the spirit of prophecy, but I can show you here in our other study, our other series, all about the Holy Spirit, all in biblical truth. And in more in Hebrew. Let me continue. In Special Testimonies for Ministers and Workers, number 7, page 25. Evil had been accumulating for centuries and could only be restrained and resisted by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. And this is why he sent the Holy Spirit. Because back in biblical days, before he came in human form, everybody was rejecting the Holy Spirit. They were grieving the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can only live in certain individuals who were obedient to his laws, to his commandments, his Torah. The third person of the Godhead who would come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of divine power. Can I hear an amen? The mighty power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. Testimonies, special testimonies for ministers and workers, number 7, page 25. Another spirit must be met, ladies and gentlemen must be met. And all of us need to understand this today. Everything is closing. It doesn't matter who's the president. Your relationship with Christ has to be 100%, no compromising. No compromising. Another spirit must be met. For the essence of evil was working in all ways, and the submission of man to this satanic captivity was amazing. Today in 2016 and following, as in Christ's day, Satan rules the minds of many around the world. Oh, that his terrible, fearful work could be discerned and resisted. Selfishness has perverted principles. Selfishness has confused the senses and clouded the judgment. Here, we, get, we have we, excuse me, been scared of the Holy Spirit. And I believe we have been. Because of all the theological confusion, because of every denomination saying that there isn't a Holy Spirit, there is, or those saying there's a trinity, I got news for you that the Bible is unadulterated, and the Holy Bible does not lie. It doesn't matter what version you read, because if you understand your scriptures, you can still exalt Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Can I hear an amen? Have we been scared of the Holy Spirit? The mighty power of the Holy Spirit is actually the third person of the Godhead. This is an unscriptural expression, but if I may be allowed to use it, may I not say that in the fullest sense of the expression, the door of mercy was opened on the 10th day of the 7th month, 1844. In the Kirat calendar, in the month of Tishri, the 10th, 1844, referring to the Hebrews, door of mercy was open to them. October 22nd, 1844, to the Gentiles, the door of mercy was opened to us. One and the same. So when he went from the holy place in 31 AD, he interceded for a long period of time in 31 AD. But let me continue. As I share here in the visual aid here, from 31 AD, Christ was crucified. And on the third day, he was resurrected. On the 50th day, which is the Feast of Weeks, which would have been Pentecost in the Western culture uh, understanding, he told the disciples to wait 50 days in Jerusalem. No, he told them to wait 10 days in Jerusalem. And you should receive power from on high, which would have been the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Pentecost, that the early rain ascended or descended. Now, for 40 days, Yeshua was exposing himself to all the people around him. Many, many people. However, he told them as he was going to his father, wait 10 days in Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen, or wait 10 days in the areas that you're at. 
So there was a week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the eighth day, he entered the most holy of holies. The most holy of holies. And as I remove this curtain or this felt, these are the angels that separate the two rooms, your holy place and the most holy of holies. Now, what happened here is that Christ went to his father. So it takes seven days to ascend to heaven. And on the eighth day, prior to him going from the holy place into the most holy of holies, where the presence of the father is at, Yahweh, the angels and everyone else had to make sure that there was no sin in Yeshua. Because if he goes in front of the father, he will be disintegrated. And he went inside on the eighth day in front of the Father, and the Father blew upon Christ, the Holy Spirit. And when he received the Holy Spirit on the tenth day, exactly as he had said, I will send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the... and he shall empower you. He shall seal you in regards to the theological correct knowledge that you have Learn from him, Yeshua. Now, as I continue, Christ entered the holy place in, in 31 AD. He has interceded 1,813 years until 1844. In 1844, he entered the most holy of holies, which is the second compartment. And as he told him to wait in Jerusalem 10 days, that he would send the comforter. The Holy Spirit was inaugurated by Yeshua to dwell with each individual at the same time today in 2016. No one has an excuse not to be in the kingdom. The only excuse they can have is nothing. In other words, there's no excuse. Ignorance is not an excuse. Actually, it is a sin. Let me continue. In 1844, when he went into the most holy place, until 2016 today, he has interceded 172 years. The books opened in 1844 for the righteous dead and the wicked. No one knows when the Holy Spirit will be called out or when judgment begins for the living. As I continue, the latter rain is waiting for us, ladies and gentlemen. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the Torah and to the testimony, they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no dawn upon them. The Holy Spirit has not dawned upon the person. The word law is word number 8451. It refers to the Torah. From the root word 3384, it means yara. The key components equals precepts, statutes, decalogue, Torah, laws. There are nine statutes to be exact. They refer to worship and health. In Joel 2, verse 23, the word reign is very key. In the root word 4175, more, more, from root word 3384, Yara refers to an archer, also teaching, also the early rain. Have you been scared of the Holy Spirit? Have we been scared of the Spirit? Because if you have been, I like to encourage you to read the book of Acts. It is God's plan that every part of his government shall depend on every other part. The whole as a wheel within a wheel, working with entire harmony, he moves upon human forces, causing his spirit to touch invisible cords, and the vibration rings to the extremity of the universe. The prince of the power of evil can only be held in check by the power of God in the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? So what's holding evil in check? The Holy Spirit. So for you to deny the Holy Spirit is to deny the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so as the scriptures tells us, for he that denies the Holy Spirit, the Father or the Son, is Antichrist. So have we matured all these years, no matter if we're 60 or 70? Theologians that have been in the schools and yet continue to uh, vibrate their conscience upon what they have learned from others, yet take not the Bible unadulterated in regards to what it really says? Let me continue. Those who have not a living connection with God have not an appreciation of the Holy Spirit's manifestations and do not distinguish between the sacred and the common. They do not obey God's voice because as the Jewish nation, they know not the time of their visitation. 
the Holy Spirit, of all the blessings which God has bestowed upon his people, the gift of his son accepted, none have been so sacred and so important to their welfare as the gifts of his holy law and his Holy Spirit exalting Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua exalts his law. Can I hear an amen? Many who call themselves Christians are mere moralists. They have refused the gift, referring to the Holy Spirit, which alone could enable them to honor Christ by representing him to the world. And this is what's been lacking all these years, even until today in 2016. The work of the Holy Spirit is to them a strange work. They are not doers of the word, the heavenly principles that distinguish those who are one with Christ from those who are one with the world have become almost indistinguishable. Christ Object Lessons, page 315. The professed followers of Christ are no longer a separated and peculiar people. The line of demarcation is indistinct. The people are subordinating themselves to the world, to its practices, its customs, its selfishness. The church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, has gone over to the world in transgression of the law. This is what's happened. When the world should have come over to the church, the remnant church, in obedience to the law, daily the church is being converted to the world. Christ's Object Lessons, 315. In the year of 1863, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was organized, 19 years prior to 1844. However, five years later, the prophet says, I was shown October 2nd, 1868, the state of God's professed people. Many of them were in darkness, yet seemed to be insensible of their true condition. Yet I saw but few standing in the light, having discernment and spirituality to discover these stumbling blocks and remove them out of the way. Testimonies for the Church, number 18, page 126. It is active labor, toil, and unceasing vigilance alone which will satisfy these unreasonable, hard-to-be-suited watchmen, another word for evangelists or pastors. Why don't they prophesy smooth things and cry, peace, peace? If they don't want to go to the kingdom, why don't they? Then everything would move on smoothly. These are the true feelings of many of our people today in 2016, since its inception, since 1844, of all denominations. Okay? Of all denominations. Testimonies for the Church, Numbers 18, page 127. Referring to the Seventh-day Adventist Church specifically. The church has departed from the light, neglected her duties, abused her high and exalted privileges of being peculiar and holy in character, and thereby dishonored her God. Like ancient Israel, this is an analogy, they have violated their covenant. Now remember, you must know the covenants. And if you violated the covenant, something has definitely, definitely occurred in everybody's denomination. How are we going to come together as a remnant church? Because all of you are all going to come out of all your non-Christian churches, which are nominal, and all nominal Seventh-day Adventist churches, you're all going to come out, and you're all going to join the remnant because of what's happening now and what is coming. So it doesn't matter who's been elected. Have you elected the Holy Spirit to dwell in your life? Have you surrendered to the working of the Holy Spirit so that you may manifest what has been given to us unadulterated? They have violated their covenant to live for God and Him only. They have joined in with the selfish and world-loving pride. The love of the pleasure and sin are cherished, and Christ has departed from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And that occurred October 2nd, 1868. So the Seventh-day Adventist Church leaders, even Ted Wilson wants to say that we're the remnant? Well, I got another thing to say is this, is that if you don't read the Spirit of Prophecy books, testimonies for the church, or your scriptures, and you're going to listen to the dumb dogs, these pastors and evangelists who are teaching you apostasy, then we can't get along. We can't. Because he says, do not be part of the world or mingle with them. Time is closing. So if we think that 6,000 years is going to go to the end, let me share with you that he's going to cut it short only for the elect's sake, for them. The ministry of the Holy Spirit his spirit has been quenched in the church. What church? Referring to the Seventh-day Adventist church. Your references, ladies and gentlemen, you can note it down. You can play the DVD once again. 
His Testimonies for the Church, number 18, page 129. Matter of fact, read the whole chapter. Can I hear an amen? Read the whole chapter so that you will see and understand the apostasy that was taking place then. They repented and now it's taking place again in repeating itself. Satan works side by side with professed Christians, yet they are so destitute of spirituality and discernment that they do not detect him. They have not the burden of the work. They do not detect the Holy Spirit. The solemn truths they profess to believe are not a reality to them. They have not genuine faith. Mercy. A train of cars was shown me going with the speed of lightning. The angel bid me look carefully. I fixed my eyes upon the train. It seemed that the whole world was on board. That there could not be one left, said the angel. They are binding in bundles ready to burn. Then he showed me the conductor, who looked like a stately fair person, which all the passengers looked like a stately fair person, which all the passengers looked up to and reverence. Supplement to the Christian Experience, page 7. I was perplexed and asked my attending angel who it was, said he, it is Satan, Hasatan. He's the one that's driving the train. He has taken the world captive. They are given over to strong delusions to believe a lie that they may be damned. This agent, the next highest in order to him, is the engineer, and others of his agents are employed in different offices as they may need them. And they are all going with lightning speed to perdition. Have we been scared of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen? The Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from the earth now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, today. And this is urgent. We have to comprehend the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of Yeshua HaMashiach, and the ministry of our Father Yahweh. They are binding in bundles ready to burn. I asked the angel, and this is Ellen White saying, she says, I asked the angel if there were none left. He made me look in an opposite direction, and I saw a little company traveling a narrow pathway. All seemed to be firmly united and bound together by the truth, unadulterated, in bundles or companies. Said the angel, the third angel is binding them, sealing them in bundles for the heavenly garner. So who's doing the sealing? Is the third angel. He's doing the sealing right now. Getting ready for what is coming. Continuing. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, three divine powers that Yahweh and the Holy Spirit have are omnipotence, mighty power, omnipresence, unbounded or universal presence, and omniscience, all-knowing. So, our Savior gave up omnipresence, but it is the Father and the Holy Spirit that have all three. Can I hear an amen? And this is why the Holy Spirit's here on the earth. Christ can't be everywhere at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. That'll never happen. He's never going to get omnipresence ever again. He will have his scars on his palms, pierced on his side. Let me continue. In these last days, the dispensation in which we are now living is to be to those that ask the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. That's the dispensation. Testimonies of Ministers, page 511, 512. In the last days, God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh who are obedient to His laws. The Sabbath is Saturday, not Sunday. Sunday is the mark of the beast. You all know that. And for those that don't know, guess what? This is the 11th hour workers that are going to come in and take your crowns because you did not do the work. When was the last time you gave Bible studies and you baptized somebody? You don't need to be with a PhD, a degree, or a diploma. You need the Holy Spirit to do this work. Because Christ had commissioned each one of us, then and now, to go and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that He had taught them and taught us. So what's holding us from going home? It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the character of Christ. Let me continue. And once again, in Joel 2, verse 28, in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. When? In the last days, referring to now, present tense. 
When all in this institution are truly converted, there will be just as surely an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as Pentecost, Feast of Weeks. MM, page 201. The institution is referring to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Christians, nominal Christians, Jews, Muslims, Catholics, and all of faiths. All faiths. No one's left out. Because all these denominations are all going to come out, they're going to realize what's happened, and they're going to join the remnant, unadulterated. Have you not been afraid of the Holy Spirit? Eight testimonies, page 61, 62. So he will have a remnant of 144,000 that will teach his Torah. They will be the embodiment of his character. They will be teachers. They will teach you the statutes and the judgments and the ordinances. They will teach and understand what has been done away with in 31 AD when the early rain came. The latter rain is going to fall again in the Feast of Weeks at Pentecost. And if you don't know when Pentecost is, I'd like you to open up your Bibles and understand the month and the day that it occurs. It's just not any old day. That's why the spring feast and the fall feast were given to the world in this earth in order to comprehend his first advent and his second advent. He returns back at the Feast of Tabernacles. And on that first day, it takes seven days to get to the kingdom. On the eighth day, on the eighth day, as we go into the kingdom, he gives a sermon. Can I hear an amen? And upon this, the Father gives us eternal life. Redemption, Volume 1, page 93. Read the whole chapter in regards to the Feast of Tabernacles. Ellen White wrote everything. James White was a pioneer. He was part of the men in, that were part around the table that they would study the doctrines. And she would go into vision and confirm that they were correct. Not everybody was a pioneer. There was only about, what, eight of them. When all in this institution of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Catholics, and of all faiths, are truly converted, that's the problem here that we don't have. Truly converted 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there will be just as surely an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as it was at the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost. And the reason why the disciples received this was because they understood the statutes, the judgments, the ordinances, the Ten Commandments. They understood the feast. So there are nine. And one of them is dealing with health. So in heaven, we're not going to eat any meat. It's going to be fruits, vegetables. The third and fourth angel's messages presented this to you so that you will comprehend who came in and invented the word Trinity. It comes from the Catholic Church. It was the Jesuits that spearheaded and changed the Gospels and infiltrated every denomination that exists on this planet, on this earth. You see, when he gave us the Gospels, he gave it to us for one specific reason. And let's turn to Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. We're going to go to verse 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Uh, it's one of my favorite verses. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, or the Pleroket, not many days hence. So he told them, wait ten days in Jerusalem, John. Matthew, wait 10 days in Jerusalem. Why? Because I'm going to inaugurate the Holy Spirit to come to each one of you so that you can be empowered and be sealed and receive my character. That was the only way that they would be sealed for eternity. And it's the same analogy for us today. So what's holding us? Have you been scared of the Holy Spirit? Have you been indoctrinated within your denomination and yet you don't need a pastor you need the Holy Spirit to help you to comprehend the scriptures. Our Father who art in heaven, I know that this is a very difficult and sensitive area, but I ask for your blessings upon all those that will study and understand this message. This is only an introduction. As we prepare to give this series, we also ask for your Holy Spirit 
to be imbued with all those who believe in your Son and the Father. It is only the Holy Spirit that is able to interpret our prayers and intercede in our behalf and pray for us and protect us. Bless the angels that each one of us have and bless us afresh with the baptism of your love bathed in us in the Torah. For your glory we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.